In this lesson, I will talk about types of functions. Okay, so a, a few of them and their domains. Let us go back to our definition of a function. So given two sets, x and y, we can look at a function f as a rule, a mapping, or a pairing that assigns elements of x to exactly one element of y. This produces a set of ordered pairs, okay? And we call the x-coordinates as the first coordinates and the y-coordinates as the second coordinate. And if our sets, if our sets x and y are sets of real numbers, then these ordered pairs are going to be the coordinates of a point. And we can plot them in our rectangular coordinate system and those set of points is going to look like this. And so this is what you call the graph of your function. A function gives way to two more sets. We have the domain of the function. So these are the elements in X for which the function is defined. And the range of your function is going to be the resulting elements in Y that is paired with the elements in the domain of your function. Let us go back to the example that I showed to you in our last lesson. So this one is a function that assigns to a vertebrate its class in the animal kingdom. And so the domain of your function here is going to be the set of all vertebrate animals. Okay, So when you say vertebrate animals, they are animals with backbones. And so that is the domain of your function. It's the set of all vertebrate animals. And so those animals which are not vertebrate animals, okay, so we call them invertebrate, they are not elements of the domain of this function. So animals such as worms, crabs, spiders, squids, and plants, okay, they are not part of the domain of this function. Let us go into a few, a few types of functions. There are so many classes of functions. We cannot possibly talk about all of them. So we will enumerate a few, a few of them, and we will look into their domains. So this is how a polynomial function looks like, okay? Where n is a non-negative integer. It can be an integer that is equal to 0 or greater than 0. And your coefficients there, they are real numbers. So your polynomial function is defined for any real number x, which is why the domain of your function is the set of real numbers. A polynomial function has a degree. So the degree of a polynomial function is the highest integer exponent of a term, okay? And there is a proper way of writing a polynomial function. We call it the standard uh, form. And we do it in such a way that the integer exponents are written or the terms are written in descending order of exponents. So the first term ought to be the term with with the highest integer exponent. So these are a few examples of polynomial functions. So a constant function is a polynomial function. Okay, It is a degree zero polynomial function. A linear function is a degree one function or a degree one polynomial function. A quadratic is a degree two polynomial function. A cubic function is a degree three polynomial function. The second class of functions that we shall meet often in differential calculus. Given two functions, p of x and q of x, the rational function f of x takes this form. Okay, So it's like it's a ratio of two polynomial function or it is a quotient of two polynomial function. And you know that 
expression such as this is going to be undefined when your denominator is equal to zero. So division by zero is undefined. Which is why the domain of this function is the set of real numbers where the denominator is not equal to zero. Or you can write the domain in, in set difference, okay, using the notation of set difference. The domain of the function is the set of real numbers, the set of real numbers minus minus all those x's where q of x is equal to zero. I am describing the domain of your function uh, in these ways because different teachers use different notations and different books use different notations to describe sets. Examples. f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. So clearly, this function is going to be undefined when x is equal to 1, okay? Which is why the domain of your function is going to be this, okay? The set of real numbers minus 1. How about this? g of x is equal to x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. Again. So the domain of your function is going to be the set of real numbers where the denominator is not equal to zero, okay? Well, let us factor x squared minus 4. You can write it as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And here you can see where your function is going to be undefined. It is undefined when x is equal to negative 2, okay, or when x is equal to 2, in which case the domain of this function would be the set of real numbers minus the set that contains negative 2 and 2. How about this? Okay, f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 all over x plus 2. Now, the, the terms of your rational function have a common factor, okay? So x squared minus 4 is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2. So the common factor is x plus 2. So when you cancel common factors, this is the resulting function, okay? It is equal to x minus 2, but you must not forget to affix this. But x cannot be equal to negative 2. Why so? Why? Well, when x is negative 2, you have division by 0. Your function is undefined. So this is how you write the domain of your function. It is equal to the set of real numbers minus negative 2. Or it can be any real number for as long as it is not equal to negative 2. Radical functions. So radical functions are functions that contain this radical sign, okay? So n there is what you call the index of your radical. When your function is the nth root of x, okay? If n is even, the domain of your function would be the set of real numbers that is greater than or equal to zero. And you know why that is so? Because when this expression here is negative, okay, when it is less than zero, and the index is even, it's going to be undefined. So the root, the nth root of a negative number when n is even is going to be undefined. Undefined in the set of real numbers, okay? When n is odd, the domain of your function will be the set of real numbers. Examples f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. Okay, so the index here is 2. It is even, and so the domain of this function will be those values of x such that this x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. That would be when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. How about this? The fourth root of x squared minus 1. 
the index is even, which means that this function is going to be defined when x squared minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And when is that true? Okay, when is that true? So that is true when x is greater than or equal to 1 or when x is less than or equal to negative 1. This is one way of writing sets, okay? We are using the interval notation, okay? So the domain of your function is the union of two sets, okay? This is the set of real numbers greater than or equal to 1, and this is how you write it in interval notation. And, okay, so the union of two sets and the other set is this, the set of real numbers less than or equal to negative 1, and this is how you write that in interval notation. How about this? What is the domain of this function? The cube root of x plus 4. So the index is odd, and so the domain of your function is the set of real numbers. Let us now look briefly into the graphs of this function, okay? So, this is not yet the, the main uh, video lesson for the graph. I will devote two or three more videos just for the graphs. But right now, I want you to, to see the relationship between the domain of your function and the graph of your function. So, let us go back to the examples that I showed to you, okay? This one, f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. And we agreed that the domain of this function would be the set of real numbers except x is equal to 1. So in which case, so you're going to see uh, a set of points, but it will never contain a point where the x coordinate is equal to 1. Okay? So this is the graph of your function f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. So the graph will not contain points where the x coordinate is equal to 1, which is why we have this line, okay? Uh, this vertical line, you know what it's called? It's called the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is not part of the graph of your function. We, we draw it in that way to tell you that, hey, your function or your graph must not touch this line. It must not cross or intersect this line because the graph of your function cannot contain the point where the x-coordinate is equal to 1. How about this? g of x is equal to x plus 1 all over x squared minus 4. So the domain of this function is any real number or the set of real numbers except negative 2 and 2. So how do you imagine will the graph look like? So this is it, okay? g of x is equal to x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so for now our concern here is not to, to see how or not to figure out how the graph came to be this way. I am just showing to you how the domain of your function affects the graph. The domain of your function here would be the set of real numbers except negative 2 and 2. So you will have this, vertical asymptotes. This is when x is equal to 2. This one is when x is equal to negative 2. So the graph of your function must not cross that line. It must not intersect that line because your function has no value when x is equal to negative 2 or when x is equal to 2. How about this? f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. Okay? So x plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0, which means x should be greater than or equal to negative 1. So what is that telling you? Okay? So that is telling you that this function is going to have a graph when x is greater than or equal to negative 1, okay? When it is less than negative 1, your function has no graph. 
Okay, so let us show it. So this is the graph of f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. How about this? f of x is equal to the fourth root of x squared minus 1. So the index is even, okay? So x squared minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0, which means x is greater than or equal to 1, or x is less than or equal to negative 1. So in these two sub-intervals, we expect to see a graph. But between these two intervals, okay, from negative 1 to 1, there's going to be a gap. You will see no graph in that sub-interval. Okay, so let us show it. So this is f of x is equal to the fourth root of x squared minus 1. The domain of this function is the union of the subintervals 1, okay, going to positive infinity, union negative 1 going to negative infinity. Your function is going to have a graph in those subintervals. But there's going to be a big gap here, okay, from negative 1 to 1. Because your function is undefined in this subinterval. Let us go to the last example. g of x is equal to cube root of x plus 4. The index is odd. Okay, it's 3. And so the domain of this function is the set of real numbers. So you are not going to have any restriction. Okay, so let us show the graph of this function. So this is it. Okay, so this is the graph of g of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 1. The domain of your function is the entire set of real numbers. And so you, you will have no breaks, no gaps, and no vertical asymptotes in the graph of this function.